Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be my 2022 makeup awards. We're going to be going through 10 categories and finding out who is the one to watch in 2023. So without further ado, let's get started. Now the first category is best newcomer and I'm slightly nervous about this one because last year's winner was Bite Beauty and so now I'm concerned that this award category may be cursed. So I can only apologize in advance for the brand that I award this to. We may see their demise in 2023 and I guess it will be my fault. But the winner for me is House Labs. Don't worry, I'm not gonna do that every time. But it was House Labs. House Labs are my newcomer, my favorite, new to me at least. Did they actually like, become a thing in 2022 or was it at the end of 2021? I don't know. They became a thing to me in 2022 with their foundation. Like I've only tried two products in the brand so far. So a real newcomer to my collection, foundation and their lip lacquers. I love both. Their foundation is incredible. It skyrocketed straight into like my top five foundations ever. The range, just the shade range alone tell me about it okay amazing so I'm excited there were some flops initially we're now starting to see some massive hits some holy grails so for me best newcomer on shade range alone house labs I really hope you don't go the way of last year's winner I'm so sorry if you do Next up, let's talk about most improved. Now there were a few in the running for this, okay. Last year it was Boots, Boots retailer here in the UK. They've gone from strength to strength, they continue to do great. But the winner for 2022 is Hourglass. Hourglass, a brand I took a full break from last year because one, they just kept on giving us nothing. They kept on giving us products that weren't gonna work on anyone over a light medium skin tone. They weren't listening to us. Everything they were putting out was like a dupe or a re-release or a re-promote or a repackaging of something we already had seen from the brand. I was losing like all interest in them, to be frank. I didn't really feel tempted by anything. I felt very fed up of them being misleading in their marketing, in their promo pictures. It was all just a mess. In 2022, they gave me one of like my top two, three foundations ever. Yes, still with issues with their shades and their undertones, but a much more inclusive range if, you know, only inclusive for super warm toned folk. But a more extensive shade range and definitely steps forward. Their holiday release was by far their best ever as far as inclusivity, as far as new, as far as something different, even when it came down to the packaging. They also gave me their Phantom Volumizing Balms, which was one of my hits of the year that I absolutely love. So this year was definitely a massive improvement on last year. So credit where's credit's due. Hourglass are definitely a bit back on my radar. I've almost forgiven them for like the single eyeshadows, but not quite, I still remember that, okay? Next up, let's talk about the collection of the year. So this for me is one where I look at the whole collection, not necessarily whether it was my favorite collection, whether it was one that I bought the whole lot of and needed and wanted everything, but just like to me, the like most impressive, the most exciting, the most eye-catching, the collection that just gave us a whole heap of joy. And for me, again, it was Pat McGrath Holiday. The Pat McGrath Holiday Collection was massive. It was ginormous this year. And the reason why I feel like it was the collection of the year is just the range that it offered something for everybody. You know, you had the five pans that were a really, really affordable price to get a whole eyeshadow palette from Pat McGrath that was much more accessible for way more people, or you could just pick up a blush. If you hadn't ever tried blushes from the brand, you had two whole blush palettes to choose from. There was also a huge eyeshadow palette full of color, if that's more your thing. I felt like it gave us the most options. It was everything about it was exciting and beautiful other than the actual process of trying to buy it of course but you know that's an, an aside 
but the actual collection itself I feel like was so impressive, was so big, so exciting, had so many different options, something for everybody. For me, that made it collection of the year. Now, my one to watch for 2023. Last year's one to watch for me was Hindash, and I definitely think he delivered. I definitely think that brand is going from strength to strength. And next year, one that I expect to do the same, it, again, it's House Labs. House Labs have definitely got my attention with their foundation. I am expecting to see concealers. I am expecting to see more products. I wouldn't have said this at all like six months ago. I feel like they had a really shaky start, but I also feel like they've really worked on stuff and their, their releases are getting better and better and better. With every time they release something, it's an, like better than what they had before. So that makes me excited for like what is coming next year. I feel like they're like finding their feet, they're finding their place and what they are good at and they're delivering it. And I am excited to see what is coming from them in 2023. I hope it's concealers and I also hope it's a UK stockist if that hasn't already happened by the time this video goes live. Now, similar to collection of the year, but different at the same time, okay, I promise, is launch of the year. So launch of the year isn't about all the products being offered or this is, you know, this beautiful, lovely collection. This is about a new, launch of something we didn't have before that gives us something that fills a gap that was a clever launch. You get me? The winner of this in 2021 was Lisa Eldridge's foundation for the reason that we had all the sample cards and the incredible shade range with all of those undertones. It was a very, very good like first complexion product launch. And this year, it's Lisa Eldridge again, this time for her eyeshadows. Not only did Lisa launch eyeshadows onto the market with one palette, no, no, she gave us five. She gave us five palettes for her first launch of eyeshadow. Are you joking? Are you joking? Who does that? Who does that but Lisa? And not only did she give us five, she gave us five completely different colour stories. She gave us refills and singles of every single shade from every one of those eyeshadow palettes. She gave us a softer, more muted, easy going every day, I'm afraid of makeup, very natural couple of color stories. She gave us full on color. She gave us impact. She gave us light and shade. She gave us like six brand new formulas across these palettes that blew my mind. The formulas in here, some of the best I've ever tried, particularly the mattes amazing. She gave us like almost no fallout across the board. She gave us the most easy to work with formulas, this most stunning, unique, glorious packaging. The whole thing was beautifully thought out, very cleverly delivered. And although I will say, I think this was probably the brand's most challenging launch to date. So we did, there were delays with shipping. A lot of people were cross with how long orders took to ship. But this was in the middle of horrendous postal strikes here in the UK, massive delays and backlogs among all of the couriers and the mail delivery system that we have here in the UK, among all of that. What I feel like stood out for me with the brand, like they always do, was their communication. They were upfront and honest. This is gonna take us, it's our biggest launch ever. We were not expecting unprecedented number of orders that they were dealing with as a very small still brand. And they communicated it. They told us the date it was going out by. If you did get in touch with customer service, you would have got, you know, a very clear, quick response to that. Mine, when I asked, you know, is everything okay with my order? It's been a week to arrive, which was, you know, much longer than previous. And they were like, this is the date it's going to be out by. We can let you know once it's gone through to the warehouse or dispatch. I got emails. It was very, very clear, way better than some other brands that we can mention that just leave us with no answers for weeks. So I feel like for me, things happen, especially with much smaller brands, especially with everything going on with the delivery issues that are currently affecting us. But for me, they handled it very, very well with great communication and open and honest communication at that. So for me, that kind of 
it wasn't really a big issue. I think I got my order in a week and five, four, I think it was working days from when I placed my order. So for me, that was really not a big issue. I saw people get theirs a lot quicker than that. I saw people get theirs after mine. I just think for a launch that size for a small brand, I still think they did phenomenally well. Next up, let's talk about collab of the year. So for me, there was no even thought process. There was no thinking about this. Of course, collab of the year has to go to Sydney Grace by Mel Thompson. Collection of single eye shadows inspired by Natasha Denona's retro colour story, her original mini retro colour story. Mel thought this out and created this palette before, long before the retro glam palette, palette was a, a thought in Natasha Denona's eye. Mel and her creativity had delivered us what we were actually looking for and it's just so beautiful to see this now come to life and be like a set that you can buy. I love that. I love that, you know, Mel's name and her creativity and her incredible genius when it came to colour combinations and colours and just looks in general with her eyeshadow is now just still bringing everybody so much joy and wonder and enjoyment. It's just incredible. I... Mel's eyeshadow looks were the best bar none. I like that. I can still very clearly remember specific looks that she did. She did eyeshadow like nobody else. Her eyeshadow was like something from some kind of sorcery mystic evolution. I can't even comprehend how she used to do what she used to do with her eyeshadow. And if we can have a little bit of magic for ourselves in there and, you know, celebrate Mel's memory and her incredible gift and talent along with one of her favorite brands and someone that the head of that brand who Mel had such a lovely personal relationship with ah oh, what a beautiful thing I absolutely love this of course collab of the year Sydney Grace by Mel Thompson just love everything about it so next up the next category product of the year this is a really hard one okay really hard I wrote down like six different things and then crossed them out I started off with Huda Beauty's concealer because although that seems like a really boring thing to have as product of the year it's my holy grail concealer now and it's got such a great shade range and it's just such a good concealer that you know and it also concealer is an important part of makeup you know so I had lots of reasons why that was going to be the winner and then I was just like I just don't think that's exciting enough to be like product of the year a concealer you know I just it's like a hero product that does all the work under the surface but you can't really see that it's there do you know what I mean so yeah I felt like that wasn't exciting enough I then put the Tom Ford primer again become my holy grail primer an incredible product that I love and use every day but again I'm like primer really is it that exciting no so how I decided to award this category was looking at all of the makeup that I purchased this year that came out this year which of these products gave me the most joy excitement and still gives me that joy and that love and that wonder and just lovely enjoyment of makeup so for me the winner is Mothership X okay well, even when I open this now and I look in my monitor and see this it gives me joy it makes my heart feel happy just to look at her so flipping beautiful and to have like a mothership palette that's literally like got your name on it as far as the shades and the looks that you get it's just amazing it gives me so much joy to use this palette I can't even tell you it just makes me happy I want to use it all of the time like almost every time I do my makeup it's just me in a palette okay so thinking about you know the product that I have got the most joy out of this year it's got to be Mothership X I just I love it so much I love it it's got my heart what can I say now the most underrated brand of 2022 an interesting category very very subjective I mean I guess all of these categories are subjective 
but how much you rate or don't rate brands is obviously very personal. So this one more than most. Last year, it was NARS. NARS was the winner last year. I still feel like NARS are more, are still underrated now, but I don't want to give them the award twice in a row, you know, otherwise they'll stop working hard for it. I just think they're going to get the award every year, like Anton Deck at the TV Awards. So I'm not giving it to NARS again this year. This year, I'm going to give it to an also contender for the most improved they were on my list I crossed them out okay I'm not gonna lie to you but most underrated brand of the year this year is Mac yes I feel like they are just long forgotten about we forgot they exist we forgot they have great products and not only do they have like great staples that they've had for years their lip products their lip liners their eyeliners their cheek products bronzers blushes highlights all great products they brought out a lot of new formulas new and improved formulas and great products this year like I feel like myself I underrate MAC you know I got their um powder kiss liquid lipsticks this year and I was like shook to my core about how good they are they're so good and I was so surprised and I don't know why because I know MAC make great lipsticks but I think I just I've known and used and loved MAC for so long that I just forget that they have been around a long time for a reason and I feel like this year they definitely came back into like my attention. They definitely had some releases that made me go, oh, they're coming back. They're coming to the forefront again. I think their holiday collection this year was the best they've had for years. I think they're bringing out some newer, fresher products again. I think they're kind of, kind of catching back up to where they got left behind. And it's now just going to take us a while to all realise this. I feel like at the moment it's kind of happening underground those who know know and it's going to take a while for the wider population makeup population to re-notice mac again but i think it's coming i think it's happening i think they've got amazing products don't forget about them they're still there and they still have some great products and now finally for the most coveted award on this whole video that's about it okay no one cares or knows about this but for me, this is the, the biggest category, okay, in the video. We're all waiting with bated breath all year to find out who the winner is gonna be. <laughs> yeah, honestly, we are, we're waiting. But it's brand of the year. Last year, it was Lisa Eldridge. And this year, it's still Lisa Eldridge, okay? It's still Lisa Eldridge. I was kind of torn back and forth between a few, but I just couldn't look past the brand. I couldn't look past Lisa Eldridge. I can't look past their customer service, their offering for such a small brand, their website, the images, the swatches, the releases, the, all, of, all of it. I can't look past it. I just love the open, honest communication and the clear, helpful information on all of their products ahead of release. I can't look past it. It blows my mind as to how good their customer service is. You can really tell about that brand that Lisa is one of us. She knows what we want. She's not just a makeup artist who does makeup on other people and works in the fashion industry. She is also like the most passionate makeup lover there is. She loves makeup more than any of us, or at least as much as as us and therefore she gets us she knows what we want she knows what we want to see she knows what we need it's little things like having the shade names and the shade formulas printed on the back of a palette it's knowing that that is really really helpful for makeup lovers it's knowing that we need to see all of the shades on someone and swatched before they launch it's having good descriptions it's doing shade comparisons on her stories with like several different skin tones of every shade with her existing shade she just gets it she gets us she gets it and that is the superpower of lisa and that brand that makes it like stand apart you can tell that someone who knows makeup and knows makeup lovers is behind every decision in that brand and that for me makes it a standout and there you have it those are my 2022 makeup awards please let me know if any of these were a shock to you, any of these category award winners, 
Were they a surprise? Did you agree with all of my winners or disagree? Please let me know in the comments section down below who your winners are this year. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye, 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 bye.